To whom it may concern, this is the realest note I ever wrote. Sitting in my room, all I got left to my name are some scribbles on a page. I've been losing track of days. Is it Monday, Sunday? Well, one day I hope they label me as the greatest. And this right here is built on blood, sweat, and dry tears. See, I've been searching through my soul while I battle through fears. I wipe my eyes from the tears. Now my vision is clear. If y'all been looking for a savior, your savior is here. Pomage, as the text read. An intro, born in 2010, an intro to a channel, to a player, and to a legend that had come to form over the next five years. Austin Pomage was just 14 years old when he began his YouTube journey, and he was, like a lot of the rest of us, simply a fan. He never seemed to realize where a hobby could get him, and he used a variety of gamer tags that went to show he was a fan of the teams he never believed he would ever join. But from there on, I actually went to become Optic Bell. Your boy was an Optic fanboy, and oh my god, I got flamed a lot. Moving on, we went to L96A1 Pimage, and this is the first name that people automatically assume I was a part of a YouTube team, which I wasn't. Uh, to my knowledge, I had no idea L96A1 was even a YouTube team in general. But Pomage still pursued recruitment challenges and a variety of others put out by Optic Hex, as he dreamed to one day join Optic, the team that he was a massive fan of. In April 2011, Pramaj released the trailer to Iridescent, a big montage he planned to release later that year. But first he found success with his montage titled The Messenger, and that montage even appeared on a sniping channel called Snipers Are Us. Then, after a near three month wait, Pomage released his greatest work, Iridescent, on July 21st, 2011. Edited by Blarpy, the montage shocked those who had found Pomage's channel in time to see it. Because he was not on a team, he was not held down to any restrictions for his clips, and Pomage's montage proved to be highly entertaining as it featured what he simply believed were his best clips. A chance experience and the amazing work he did on Iridescent would change Pramaj's life. And time went on and I had noticed a lot of the optics had Twitter and they used them a lot. So I made my own Twitter and I was looking, I would just look on Twitter every day just to see what they're doing just because you know, I was a huge fan of them and I wanted to play with them and everything but I wouldn't ask only I would only ask if they were looking for people to play with and the first one to ask for players was Apostle and I had asked just giving it a shot to see if I, he would invite me and everything and what do you know he invites me so I'm I'm all excited I'm, I'm gonna play with an optic and everything and I play with him and doing through that night me and him were getting along pretty well and at the end of the night when he was about to get off he sent me a friend request I was so happy and then when I had met Apostle like he's been saying randomly Pomage you should join Optic it was like I didn't know what to say to that at the start I just kinda went on with it, it was like oh yeah okay and then this one time he was serious and he had been spamming raided full he'd been spamming this chat in the optic chat iridescent because you know he really wanted me in and apostle is the like what had gotten me to where i am now i had showed predator all of my stuff and all that 
and I remember it, it was on a Wasteland game where he had asked me a bunch of these questions if I could be depended on to put out content and everything. And I was just, I was trying to stay cool and everything that he was actually a asking me and I thought, I didn't think I would have got to this point as to where he was asking me questions if I could provide for Optic and I was really excited and everything. And uh, he asked me a bunch of these questions and then there was this one where he had said, you don't sound very confident. And I was, that one kind of stumped me a bit. So I I knew I was going to, I could feel confident enough to do it though. So confidence was definitely one of the keys that got me to where I was, to where I am now. And uh, then he popped a question to say, would you like to join Optic? And then, yep, and I said yes, like probably anyone else would. And with this, after having never been on a previous major team, Kamaj had found himself on one of the top teams at the time, Optic. Two months after joining Optic, Pomage released Iridescent 2, a sequel that proved to be just as successful as its predecessor. The next month, Pomage released the first episode of Pomage Perfectionist, a series he would continue to do over the rest of his career to much success. or Pimaj, whatever you want to call me. This is the first commentary I've ever done before. And Days later, he released his first official commentary, marking his start at commentating, a skill he would no doubt work to improve over the years. Um, I'm in phase now, so... But I'm still supporting Optic, like, everywhere and everything they do. I'm still going to retweet them. They're still in my sub box. They're still... I'm going to like all their videos. I'm on... I left on good terms. 2012 began with a difficult decision for Pomage. Optic's sniping team had been slowly declining as Optic's competitive team rose in popularity. At the same time, a new sniping team had begun to rise to the top of the ranks. This team went by the name of FaZe. Pomage walked away from Optic in February 2012 to join FaZe Clan. Exactly one month later, his introducing video went up on the FaZe channel. The new hype he had gained after joining FaZe helped grow his channel, and he reached 20,000 subscribers in March as well. In April, another big achievement was reached by Pomage. He uploaded the third and intended to be final segment in the Iridescent series. This helped put him on track to have 30,000 subscribers in May of 2012. Later that year, Pomage released the montage Retribution, which he had managed to create in less than two weeks. Just days after Retribution, Pomaj released his 60,000 subscriber montage. After all the success Pomaj had accomplished with the Iridescent series, many would have never believed that he could create another amazing and new series, 
but he did so in September when he released Catalyst to the FaZe Clan channel to the tune of over 3 million views. The hype train continued, and he achieved 100,000 subscribers in November of 2012. By January of 2013, his number of subscribers had doubled, and he reached 200,000 subscribers while also reflecting on how it was that he joined FaZe Clan, a team who he may have never accomplished these milestones without. I was in the Optic Team Taj, and I really put, I really uh, showed myself in that Team Taj, and I actually had Seabass message me saying, you killed that Optic Team Taj. And, uh, you know, so I guess he really liked it, he watched it, and, uh, UAV awaiting order. Over time, he kind of always messaged me. He was always like, "Face Pomage, face Pomage," and um, it was kind of, it was kind of weird because I, I realized that I always had that option to go to Phase, and it took me about four months, I guess. Um, it was about a week after Monfort Three came out. He always messaged me, like random times, and uh, I joined, you know, about March seventh. That's when my first video went up. So I guess that's when I joined. And uh, the reason it took me so long, the reason it took me so long was because, um, you know, I had a lot of friends in Optic. Like, I mean, I still do, and that was the reason I started. And I'm always one of those people that like looks out to what people have done for me. And I didn't want to leave because Marcus did a lot for me, or Apostle. He gave me that one opportunity, and I really didn't want to leave. So that's what held me back. And I had uh, Jewel, Negrito, and Raiden help me out, and they told me. You know, they wanted the best for me, they wanted me to join, they wanted me to grow, and I thank them a lot for that. If it wasn't for them, I probably wouldn't have joined. Pomage also sees the opportunity in February to lead the Fear Sniping Team, while remaining a player for FaZe, a team who he'd now been on for a year. Now, you guys are probably wondering why, like, I'm sure you've seen on Twitter, what is Team Fear, and what I kind of associate myself with Team Fear. Um, I'm pretty much a leader of Team Fear. Um, they presented to me an idea. I liked the idea. I'm still a part of FaZe, but I will not be posting, but I'm sort of, I'm sort of like putting my, you know, kind of knowledge into Fear. And I have three or, no, no, I have four others. And uh, we have a lot of really good members. Like there's no bad member in that clan. They're all amazing. After reaching 300,000 subscribers in March, Pramaj's channel proved to be on fire, and he seized the opportunity to do a day in the life video. <laughs> All right, so, I'm in the middle of Comitech class, and I feel really awkward right now. Um, it's going to be like this the entire day, and here's my class right now. And uh, I kind of asked, I don't know if I, yeah, I asked him to say something. I really did. It's not, this is kind of staged, so what did I ask you guys to say? Awesome. Awesome. All the while, Pomage was still in high school you know and was still required to live under his parents' so rules, even if they did not completely um, understand gaming. But, um, my mom and them, you know, they were really uh, skeptical. Like they already, they always like watched and made sure I was like going outside, hanging out with friends. You know, I kept track of that. It's just there was some times where I just didn't, you know, focus on that. It was just f focused on YouTube. I started getting the milestones probably about five months after I started doing YouTube. It was, no, it was around, it was around optic because my mom understood it more, and uh, we wanted to celebrate more and more. We celebrated our my very first video on optic and how. By April, the fear sniping team Pomage was leading had put out its first big montage, Equilibrium, which received heavily positive feedback and brought new hope for the fear sniping team.
Days later, Pramaj reached what many believed was the cusp of success, a line that no sniper had passed before. He passed both FaZe's leader Temper and subscribers, and even the golden boy of Optic's sniping team, Predator. Number one most subscribed FaZe person in FaZe. And this morning I passed Temper, and uh, you know, that was unreal. I mean, he didn't post a video for so long, you know, but he's still the leader of FaZe. But it's just, it's unreal that I got this far. Like, it just baffles me. I just passed Predator and subscribers. Um, you know, it's like that because he didn't post. And, you know, I don't blame him because he ha he's doing stuff in life now. He's doing his own thing. I, I'm so happy for the guys, as well as Apostle. He also made what was likely the most promising, but still a failed push, to bring e-sniping or competitive sniping to North America, even after it had been so popular overseas. And let's go ahead and introduce our players already, though, I just want to say, Tetra, what is up? You guys are looking very strong here. The Tetra squad is going to consist of Homage, Rockstar, Raided, as well as Tasmo on the other side. You are going to have the guys of Wolfpack, Kurzu, Nair, Negrito, Bandito, as well as Zolik. So, uh, hard point here. It's going to be a little bit different with snipers, something that I'm not used to seeing at the very least. Because usually snipers are going to be uh, holding down the uh, hill with an SMG or a shotgun, per se. And that is not going to be the case here. It's all sniping gameplay, which is going to be quite interesting. As we go ahead and see what's up with Negrito Bandito, he's able to pick off two. But Tasmo with that stop there, nice work by Tasmo as Negrito Bandito is going to be taken out on that one. A string of successes were then let off for Pramaj. First he reached 500,000 subscribers in June, and then he became the co-leader of FaZe Clan in August. You guys are probably wondering, what is that? Are you gonna be still making videos? Because Banks doesn't really make that many, but he still does. Seabass doesn't make any. Tommy, he makes them here and there. But nope, that is not the case. I will still be putting up episodes, montages, commentaries, minis, top fives, whatever. There's a lot of them. A lot will happen still, and uh, if you guys are wondering what my responsibilities are, it's slowly coming. Um, really, we're wanting to sort of expand. Banks and Seabass run the YouTube channel like perfectly. It's perfect. It's just exactly the way it should be. There's a war inside of me, burning red and honestly, and I wait. But a month later in September, Pramaj made a decision that is forever marked in the history of the sniping community. On September 20th, 2013, The Catalyst 2, arguably the greatest montage of all time, was uploaded. Pramaj had spent the vast majority of 2013 hitting the clips that were in the montage, and the editor, FaZe SLP, had spent nearly every day for two straight months editing it. A work of this proportion may never be seen again. FaZe had intended to upload the video on the team's channel, rather than Pramaj uploading it on his personal channel. After considering the amount of work that he put into the video, Pomage, with SLP's permission, made the decision to upload the video on his own personal channel, and in turn was forced to decide to walk away from FaZe Clan. Uh, why I left FaZe Clan, if you guys didn't know, I left FaZe right before Catalyst 2 was uploaded, like minutes before. It was a very hard decision, and I will tell you guys from my point of view what happened. I started to realize I wanted to push my own brand, I wanted to become more independent with myself. I wanted to start making my own decisions. I wanted to represent myself more and more just for myself, just Pomage, not exactly FaZe or FaZe Pomage. The time got closer, the Catalyst 2 released it. I was like, I said to myself, this is a video I've been working on for a very long time. It is my video and I, I kind of, I really want this on my channel. Pomage only seemed to benefit from his decision and he reached 750,000 subscribers just five days after uploading Catalyst 2. The decision to go solo had worked out for him, and he did not intend to create a new team despite the publicity the team could have had. I, I really don't think I would have enough time to uh, to make a clan and manage it and look after all the uploads and get the players and you know make sure everything's in order because I'm already it's 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 already a ha it's almost a hassle 
as it is. And you guys may be saying, oh, you're just playing video games. It can't be that much of a hassle. There's a lot more that happens beyond it. Um, but, you know, that's, that depends if you understand it or not, if you're going to agree with that. In October, Pomaj released what he believed would be his last montage on Xbox 360, as both the Xbox One and Call of Duty Ghosts were slated to come out very soon. He named the montage Iridescent 4, an attempt to pay homage to the previous three successful montages. But the video would be far from Pomage's last on Xbox 360. At the start of 2013, Pomage had reached his greatest milestone yet, 1 million subscribers. Just a year earlier he had 200,000, and two years prior in 2012, he had less than 20,000 in the early part of that year. I just recently hit 1 million subscribers. You guys probably do know because the title of this video. It's really awesome how that happened and I can't thank you guys enough. Despite all the drama that may have been brought over him by his decision to leave FaZe Clan in the last year, he still remained close friends with many of those on the team. <laughs> That's me. You guys don't know who Sensei is, he's literally the god of everyone else. Check out that flag though. Yo, that flag though. That flag though. I don't think you guys have seen this. It's pretty new. And then this sucker that I won't be getting for god knows how long, because I don't know, I'm a scum. After a long wait, his 1 million subscriber montage was released in June. He also got the taste for competition once again, and while it may not have been the e-sniping that he had once enjoyed, he was able to join the Old Men of Optic team in July with a variety of old Optic members. Oh baby, let's go! Oh, what do they want? So today was actually a very important day for me last year, it's the day I actually left FaZe Clan, as I said before, and people think it was really easy for me to do that. It was definitely not easy. It was not easy for me to live Optic for FaZe. It was not easy for me to leave FaZe and become independent. A lot of went right for Pomage in the last year since he departed FaZe Clan, and he even put up his 1,000th video on YouTube just days later. And then Austin Pomage here, and today is actually the 1,000th upload to this channel. I don't know if I said that right. Who cares? He also took the time to explain the Pomage logo that he'd worked so hard to push when he began marketing himself. I the logo a lot more than what I used to because I wanted to push my own brand. I wanted to see if I could actually create my own brand instead of just be calling FaZe Pomage. I wanted to see if like Pomage could be a thing, if I could have an own logo like FaZe's and all that, like an optic and all that stuff. 2015 kicked off with Pomage's account being hacked for what was not the first or the last time. It was a trend that he began to accept with his new fame. Simply put, everyone wanted to be Pomage. Hey! Alright. What is going on, guys? It's Austin. No, it's not even Austin Pomage. It's fucking Thy Pam. Yes, my account got hacked. He also released a montage later that year in June, simply titled Sniper Call of Duty Montage. And I'm ready to go to war like. The next day, he looked back on his first montage, and just how far he had come, while next, taking the time to look back on the first Pomage Perfectionist episode. And, uh, yeah, this is actually Blurby's very first edit, like, ever. Like, I remember giving him a couple clips here and there, and I was like, you know what, let's see what you can do. I, I don't know how I met him, actually. It's, uh... I'm having trouble remembering how I met him full out, but, uh, you know, he was, he's, look at this, I man, I thought that was the coolest thing ever, I showed my brother, I was like, yo, check this out, I got the sickest editor ever, and to this day, if, if Larby was still around, he'd still be editing all my shit, because I trust that man, day one, that guy made my videos pretty goddamn awesome, you know, this episode was easily one of my favorite videos that I've ever made, I know I say that about a lot of my videos, because I have a lot of fun editing all my videos, because I edited them and I just remember doing each and every crop that have ever happened. See, you have Optic Homage here, then you have Perfectionist Episode 1. I wanted to be Optic Homage, Perfectionist Episode 1. But this is the triple that got me in a phase. Unreal triple should have been a quad, not complaining here. And then I had like these nice little no-scope turn-ons. 
Also, Pomage made an appearance at MLG at the X Games that year when he played beside another optic legend, Nade Shot. Where, where's Pomage? Pomage, seven and one with a sniper rifle. He's like, yo, this is old school. There you go. Pomage, Pomage is gonna, sick with the sniper. Dude, he's, he's gonna tear it up. He's like, yo, Hector, how'd you like that? This guy probably oh! had no idea what's happening. That was, that was Hector. Oh, Hector. yo, Pomage, what sensitivity are you playing on right now? Don't even go for the drone. Don't do it. Pomage's no. gonna go for the drone. No. Throw the drone away, pass it to a teammate, get rid of it. You don't I need it. If they ever brought like a pro mod back, like would Pomaj be like the number one pick as a sniper? Oh, he's so good. Like his, his sniper shot just he just doesn't man. I'm gonna straight back to Pomaj. Main shot six and two, but Pomaj with a sniper rifle is like this is home sweet home. Um, yeah. Alright, so now who's gonna pick up the drone? That's the question. Pomaj. Alright, like. Pomaj, this could be for most uplink caps. Yo, is I he wanna gonna, see him slide and throw it in. Is he gonna go for like something crazy? Oh! oh! Fail of the week! Pomage! <laughs> with a huge fail right there. Looks like Louie's gonna pick the drone up. Oh, Team Martin, last man up! Gets the kill! Team Martin with a huge stop. Do we have an, do we have an overtime game on our hands here, Ben? I, yeah, we, we potentially could. This could be good OT, but Team Martin trying to stop it. Don't fall off the map again. Uplink drone is still in bounds, and it's in Nate Shot's hands. The final 20 seconds. Nate Shot making his way straight down the middle of the 360 oh. spin. The disrespect from Nate Shot. And that means he's tied at six uplinks as well. Yeah, Bow Shot coming out here. Looks like Team Nate Shot with a two point advantage here. Is anyone from Hector's team near the drone? Team Martin, really, the only one. Wow. Any hope right here. Nice Time looks like it's gonna run out. Another Pomage montage received considerable notice in July, but this time not for Pomage's clips, but rather for the editor, Nikki HD, who put together an amazingly edited montage. Sometimes I don't want to wake up Cause dreams are what we're made of And we live in a world where fake girls Take fake drugs, make fake love Damn, what's the real at? Can't tell me you can't feel that These layers that I feel back Now tell me, is this real rap? Fuck that, this is heartbreak How much can this heart Next, Pomage released a creative video titled The Rap Commentary at the end of July of 2015 That took a look back on the sniping community And what it was becoming Using a new idea and concept Welcome to this YouTube video. Me and your pajamas go together like an Oreo. Ying and yang shit, it's all about the piece. Here we go, this beat by my homie J. Cole. It's lit, this gameplay, I have no idea what it is. Something on my mind, figured I would rhyme it. Video ideas, I'm the main man behind it. Now one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Something on my mind about all these YouTube videos. Need a girlfriend or a sister to make the views blow up. Click baiting thumbnails and titles. We understand all the same game types of video games. All the same, man. It's got a little lame. I myself have tried my best to stray away from that little saturated mess. But nowadays, people don't give a shit about the skill. It's all about those lucky one shot kills. Just being real. I'm just saying, dude. Now, this is about shots fired. It's not about that. We're, and honestly, this entire point. I was writing down, I was like, these are thoughts in my head. And this is just a new type of video concept. All right. What happened to Grizz? What happened to Dietrich? What happened to all of these amazing little legends? What happened to Reefs? No one gives a shit about the multi-kill. Let's be real, it's 2015, man. People don't even give a shit about the skill. Just saying, man, just being real. Kamaj will forever be thought after as one of the most inspiring YouTubers in the sniping community, even if he has since been passed in subscribers by Phase Rain. Nonetheless, he has reached two million subscribers, an achievement only him and Rain can say they've accomplished as individual players in the sniping community. A young Pomage may have never realized the possibilities that he, as a fanboy, would one day become a star and a legend in his own right, all because of one lucky encounter. He's an inspiration for every solo player out there who decided they wanted to be themselves and only work towards their very own success. Thanks everyone who stuck around to watch the entire Pomage movie. I'm Sponge Rap and a big congratulations going on to Pomage on reaching 2 million subscribers. That is a huge milestone. Also, thank you for Luke T Concepts for making the thumbnail for this video. And a shout out to Witty. Wit Lowry has been making some awesome music. Three of his older songs are appearing in this video. I will have a link to his channel down in the description. You want to check out some of his music. He's just blowing up over the course of time. When I found him, he had like maybe 5,000 subscribers on YouTube. Now I don't even know how many he has. It doesn't even really matter. 
matter anymore because now he's on iTunes. He's got a new album coming out called Dream With My Eyes Wide Open. It's going to be amazing, so be sure to check out Witty's music. He's an awesome guy, and he's pretty active on Twitter, too, if you want to hit him up. Anything about his music, he'll probably at least read your tweets. He just seems like a pretty cool guy. So thanks to everyone who helped me out with this video. I will see you guys in the next one.